don't know about you, but I sometimes, in fact, most of the time, I have this little voice in my head. I have actually many voices, I feel like. Oh, that sounded bad. Stick with me. Here's the thing. I would ask myself for a long time, many years, how do I tell the difference between the helpful thoughts where I'm like, ooh, this is an intuitive gut instinct. Yes, this is the stuff things and dreams are made of. And this is what I should listen to. This is, as some might say, God or my spirit guides or my higher self or just your gut instinct, whatever you want to call it. It's those divine little intuitive thoughts. How do you tell the difference between those? and anxiety. I don't know about you, but I have been diagnosed with anxiety and OCD. And so the obsessive compulsive thoughts, almost as if I have a disorder. I was like, how can I tell the difference? Which ones do I focus on, act on? And now I know. And I'm gonna share that with you today. So I'm gonna break this up into two p -p 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 sections, class. Okay, we have the ego, all right? I'm gonna call it the ego. This is also the mind, okay? Our thoughts, that hamster wheel, and it's fear. Then we have our intuition. This is what I'm gonna call our true self. Some spiritual people might call it our higher self or the universe. Our intuition, our intuitive thoughts are linked to our body. Okay, your body has wisdom. You ever around someone and your, your shoulders tense, your skin crawls, your, your goosebumps, your hair standing up on the back of your neck like a dog, you don't like that person. Your body has ancient wisdom. So this is your body, not your mind. Okay, a lot of people say our gut, like our literal gut acts as a second brain. So now that we know the difference and what they are, I'm gonna sum it up and I'm gonna call it the ego mind and in the intuitive thoughts. So the egoic thoughts, the intuitive thoughts. And you know what? No, I'm gonna change that. It's gonna be into, it's gonna be, instead of ego thoughts, it's gonna be fearful thoughts. And then we're gonna have intuitive thoughts. Okay, first things first. Do you ever have like a thought and you're like, oh my God, is this an intuitive thought? And it's like a bad, scary situation. You're like, oh my God. And you're filled with like despair and scared. And like, you're like, is this, is this an intuitive thought? Is this like a premonition? No, that part of you is your ego. It's your fear mind. So your intuitive thoughts, your intuitive mind never, never comes from a place of fear or anxiety. And your ego mind, your fearful thoughts, comes from a place of fear and anxiety. So that's the first major difference. If the thought gives you fear and anxiety, it's not your intuition. And a lot of what I am quoting today is loosely, it's based off a lot of things, but I feel like a book that really summarizes this up really well is The Mountain Is You by Brianna Weiss. I hope I pronounced her last name right. <laughs> but anyway, the book is called The Mountain Is You and it's an incredible book. I've had like a million epiphanies. I've been called out so many times. If you really wanna be roasted, if you self-sabotage, you need this book, it's great. Like you don't even have to read it like straight through. You could just read it, like flip to a page and read a little bit and come back to it. I don't know, it's fun. Anyway, she says that you cannot have an instinct about a, meaning instinct meaning intuitive thought, your intuition, your gut, your instinct. You cannot have an instinct about a future event because it doesn't exist yet. You can, however, have a fear-based or memory response being projected into the future. But you cannot instinctively know something about a situation or a person or an event until it is in front of you. Until it is in front of you. You cannot have an instinct about it. An instinct of thought is a response to it in the moment, the present moment. So first and foremost, let go of trying to use your intuition and your instincts as a fortune telling or future telling mechanism because that's not how it works it works in the present moment is really <gasps> that's all that exists y'all we don't have the future all we have is a projection of our thoughts and then we don't have the past all we have is memory literally all that technically exists is the fucking right now so she says let go of trusting every single thing we feel instead of discerning what's an actual reaction and what's a projection. So your instinct is subtle. 
it's gentle it whispers your ego your fears are loud they're demanding they're alarming and they suck you in your instinct can serve you in the present moment it is your first subconscious reaction. That's why they say don't change your answers on a test because your first instinct is usually right. Once you start bringing the mind, like I said, the ego into it and thinking too much into it, you start second guessing. So the key to listening to your instinct is to stay present. Feel into your body more. Learn about your feelings and yourself and your values. Stay present. Ask yourself, what is true right now? right here what do i feel what is my reaction to the situation in front of me this moment this very moment like right now i'm filming a video for my youtube channel i might even turn this into a podcast audio i feel calm i feel successful creative i feel empowered speaking so ask yourself what is true when you're with another person or when you're at a place or doing an activity or a certain behavior? What is the deep gut instinct you get when you're presently engaging with something? Does it differ from what you think about it and feel about it when you're just imagining yourself doing it or imagining it or making guesses about how it might feel? Is it different than imagining what it would be like? Projections are typically fear and our present reactions are often insight. It's your honest instinct. And your, your gut, honest instinct will never frighten you into panic. Something that is revolutionary for me as somebody that struggles with mental illness especially is to think of my mind as there's different parts of myself. So for instance, trigger warning, I will be talking about suicide. Nothing too graphic, but if this is too much for you, I understand, I love you. Maybe click out of this video until you're in a place you can hear it. And for those of you who stayed, I will continue on. So I've been at a place where I have felt very suicidal. Something that really helps me, and it's not a fix-all, cure-all, but something that really helps me in my perspective of things, not just in that, but in general, is to think of things as a part of me. So instead of saying, I feel like myself, instead of saying, I feel like hurting myself, I could take a step to become aware of what I'm thinking and say a part of me feels like hurting myself because there's different parts of us especially for someone like me where I feel like I struggle a lot with feeling um, not so much right now but in the past I've struggled a lot with feeling suicidal and it's just a really scary and hopeless and intense feeling. So intuitive thoughts, they're calm. They come from the perspective of your best self. Your intuitive thoughts solve problems and your fearful egoic thoughts create problems. So intuitive thoughts come from the perspective of your best self. Fearful thoughts, egoic thoughts come from the perspective of your most fearful self. So the part of you that is most fearful. So think of things as a part of me feels this way. A part of me also may feel this way. A part of me, like, you know, sometimes I feel really, you know, angry or upset or irritated, you know, the spectrum of emotions. And I'll feel like some sort of emotion that is strong and intense like that. And think of it as like a part of me feels this way. Another part of me may feel grateful for being alive right now in the air I breathe. And another part of me may feel comforted by someone who is helping me deal with that anger. Maybe I'm talking to a friend while I'm angry. So parts of you can feel different things. You can feel multiple things. It's important to remember that, especially when you're in really heavy stages, like when you're in stages where you might be grieving, like heavy grief periods, like remember that a part of you is grieving, but there's another part of you that can also be happy. You know, you can allow yourself moments of happiness and allow yourself moments of joy, and then also allow yourself moments of despair. Allow yourself moments of crying and whatever it is you need to release and feel what you feel. I mean, it's all neither good nor bad in a way. It's all to be respected. So anyway, your intuitive thoughts are rational. Intruding thoughts are fearful and they're irrational. And they often like jump to the worst possible conclusion or make a situation bigger than it is. 
Intuitive thoughts, on the other hand, help you make better informed decisions in the present moment. They help you help others in the moment. Intruding thoughts often don't have anything to do with what's going on in the present moment. Intuitive thoughts sound loving. Intruding thoughts sound loud, panicked. They close your heart and they make you feel stuck or condemned. They tend to be persistent and induce this feeling of panic. Whereas intuitive thoughts never make you feel fearful, never make you panic, never makes you anxious or sad or disappointed. They're quiet. They open your mind to possibilities. They come to you once, maybe twice, and they induce a feeling of certainty, clarity understanding. Intuitive thoughts usually come out of nowhere, but they have something to do with the present moment. Intuitive thoughts don't need to be grappled with. You have them and then you let them go. Whereas intruding thoughts feel impossible to stop thinking about them. An invasive thought can begin a whole spiral of ideas and anxious thoughts. And it's, it's often triggered by external stimuli but has nothing to do with the present moment. Intuitive thoughts, they help you understand what you're thinking and what you're feeling. Invasive, intruding, fearful thoughts, egoic thoughts, assume what other people are thinking and feeling. Intuitive thoughts are rational. Intruding thoughts are irrational. Intuitive thoughts come from a place deep in your body, in your gut. Invasive, intruding, fearful, egoic thoughts, they keep you stuck in your head and give you a panicked feeling. Intuitive thoughts, they show you how to respond Invasive, intruding, egoic, fearful thoughts demand that you react. It's important to allow yourself to feel what you feel without judgment, without resistance, without suppression. I think that's good. My battery's about to die anyway. That's it for today. <sighs> Thank you if you made it to this part in the video. Thank you. I love y'all.